is using blackface in opera racist? Got an article here at Classic FM. And this came out the 13th. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Culture Confederacy here. It's Sunday night. Pipe and coffee in hand, as always. So let's get to it. So the big controversy is over the comments made by Anna Nubreco. And the fact that this Italian opera company is defending her comment. So it says here, Everywhere in the world used to have blackface. Opera Festival defends Anna Nubreco controversy. This is a story by Sophia Alexandra Hall. It says here, Anna Nubreco is starring as Aida in the Verdi opera of the same name at the Arena di Verona's Summer Festival. And the Italian venue has defended its decision to darken the soprano's skin for the role. Anna Nubreco has been cast in the titular role of Aida in Verdi's opera of the same name multiple times, despite the character being an Ethiopian princess. This summer, the soprano is appearing at the Arena di Verona opera festival in the role, and earlier this week took to Instagram to share photos of herself and the cast. In the photo, she, or series of photos, she appears to be wearing makeup which makes her skin darker. Other white presenting members of the cast are seen to be doing the same thing, including baritone Ambrogio Maestri. Now, here's my thought on this. If you're dressing up in dark makeup or blackface to perform some type of character and there's no racial motivation behind it, I don't have any problem with that. And one thing you want in opera is authenticity. You want to be authentic. And Aida is, as it says here, an Ethiopian princess. So it would not make any sense to have somebody play a white Aida. Now, why they couldn't find somebody who was black to play the part, I don't know. But that's another topic for another day. Nebrecco, a white Russian soprano, has previously defended her casting in the role. In 2019, when she posted a picture of herself as Aida on Instagram, a fan asked whether the blackface was necessary, to which Nebrecco replied, quote, I am not going to be white Aida. Blackface and black body for Ethiopian princesses for Verdi, greatest opera. Yes. As we'll talk about here in a little bit, blackface goes back a long time, actually to ancient Greece, and, uh, probably ancient Greece and Rome. I'm still trying to wake up from doing the overnight show. I'll tell you, this 12 to 8 shift is really killing me. It really is. But at any rate, getting back to the article here. You want to be, as I was saying, authentic. And blackface goes all the way back to ancient Rome, ancient Greece, where... The use of black makeup or blackface represented death. It represented evil or uh, it represented uh, mourning. Now, in 2019, soprano Tamara Wilson became the first soprano in 106 years to openly criticize the black face worn by Ida in the Arena di Verona, was playing the role herself. On the second night of the show, the soprano still wore skin darkening makeup, the lighter than originally intended by the production. Wilson did not perform in the third performance and was instead replaced by soprano Maria Jose Siri, who did wear blackface. So is Siri, is she Hispanic? She'd have darker skin? So somebody with darker skin is putting on black makeup to play the part of Aida, who's an Ethiopian princess. And I'll say it again. If you're putting on some type of black makeup to play a particular role and there's no racial motivation behind it, I don't think there's a problem with that. In response to the criticism over the 2022 production, Arena di Verona Opera Festival told Opera Wire, quote, the point is that as long as we do a historical Aida in the arena, it is very difficult for us to change something. Well, change is good. 
And they've got a picture here of Anna Nubreco dressed up as Aida. It's very well done. In fact, I have never seen a picture of Anna Nubreco. So if I saw this, even with the makeup, I would assume that she happens to be African-American. She looks African-American in this photo. Or, or Afri of African descent. So used to saying African-American women in the United States. But she's in this really nice, fancy costume that's authentic to the time period. Verona continued, quote, we have two Aedas. One is a copy of the one that opened the Arena di Verona in 1913. And this is a replica. The second one is the Zeffirelli Aida, which was made when the sensitive topics were not such an issue. And I think that's a problem today. We have become so sensitive to everything. People are offended by anything and everything. That they can't step back and say, wait a minute, this is just an opera. One of the great opera, now I'm not a fan of Verdi, but this was probably the greatest opera that Verdi ever wrote or composed. So the second one is the Zeffirelli Aida, which was made when these sensitive topics were not such an issue. Everywhere in the world used to have what you call blackface, as I mentioned. So as long as we have a historical production, it is very hard to change them because it means changing something that was designed that way. Somehow the Arena di Verona is a theatrical museum. We don't have new productions every year. We want our history to feel like it's living. Exactly. Great music, great art. A book, a novel, shouldn't just be left on a shelf somewhere to gather dust. It should be as real and as alive as when it was, or today, as it was when it was first created. That's the mark of great music. That's the mark of great art, regardless of who created it. The company added, quote, we decided to have a philological approach, and as long as we don't have a new production, we follow that philological approach. We must respect the historical truth. The company also said, we follow what was made in 1913 and many decades ago when Zeffirelli staged his first Aida. We are following what they decided to do in that era. Our season is like a historical museum of the theatrical taste during the last century. This was the rage during the last century exoticism, something that spilled over from the latter part of the 19th century. Remember Sassons, Samson and Delilah? Was that poking fun at people in the Middle East because they dressed up like people from the Middle East or like Samson and Delilah in that opera? Because you got to remember back in the day, there weren't movie theaters. There wasn't television. There wasn't even radio. A lot of part of the 19th century. Well, came out in the 1890s. But everything we have now, they didn't have in those days. So when you went to the theater, it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You wanted to be entertained. You wanted to feel real. Keep going back to that word authentic, but that's the basis of this. It isn't based in racism. This isn't why this uh, production company is putting on this uh, version of AIDA. They want to be as historically accurate as they can. Opera performers across the world were quick to comment on their disappointment with the decision from the Italian venue. Michael Sumuel, an operatic bass baritone from Texas, commented on Twitter, quote, It's very simple. Blackface is disgusting. I don't care how famous you are. If you're the opera company, you can get out of here. Uh, you, you can get out of here with your artistic expression. Okay, I'll give you that. But, but we go back to this whole idea of if there are racial undertones to it, and it's being done intentionally to mock a particular race, then yes, there is a problem with it. That isn't the case here. And when you have a tradition in the theater that goes back several centuries, what do you think they were doing during Shakespeare's time? Why do you think he called the globe the globe?
And you had men dressing up as women because women really weren't allowed to be in the theater at that time. So were men dressing up as women in these different female roles? Were they making fun of women? Were they degrading women? No, a lot of times they were playing these heroine type characters. Joan of Arc. Can't remember if Joan of Arc was from around the same time as Shakespeare or not, but, but you get the point. And in the 16th century, 17th century more specifically, that was the study, a century that studied expression, and that was the century of theater. Metso soprano Jamie Barton also shared her views on the social media platform and said, quote, it's been a long day and I'm hella tired, but I'm, mo I'm not too tired to say that blackface is and always was disgustingly wrong. Why? And there's three wh uh, whys in that, by the way. Why is this even a question? Double question mark. How is this not obvious? Question mark, exclamation point. The singer then tagged both Nubreco and Verona, asking them to do better. It's seriously not that hard. In 2020, when the Metropolitan Opera published its statement in support of Black Lives Matter, here you go, folks, social media was quick to ask whether the opera company would be removing its production of Aida from the Met website, which starred Nubreco in blackface. And here's the problem. They connect what happened in 2020 with, let's say, George Floyd or Breonna Taylor with an opera that was written over 100 some odd years ago by Giuseppe Verdi. The 19th century was a completely different time, and I can guarantee you there were a lot of bad portrayals of the Irish, a lot of bad portrayals of the Polish people, of the Czechs. Did you know that the, uh, the, the, the Czechs were seen as a minority? They were looked down upon? They didn't even take their orchestras or their, their operas seriously until Smetna came around with The Bartered Bride, and he produced this magnificent cycle of six symphonic poems called Mavlost, My Country. That's when people started taking notice. Dvorak did the same thing. People thought he couldn't write a piano concerto, and he did. They didn't think that Dvorak could write a symphony, and he did. He also wrote the New World Symphony when he was in New York City. And his cello concerto was written in the United States. The production from 2018 had Nebreco in dark makeup, despite the opera company announcing in 2015 that it would eliminate the use of quote-unquote ethnic makeup in all of its productions. Well, why? If you're talking about an opera that's set back in ancient Egypt, does it make any sense to have all these... This is, this is the thing that's always gotten me about these Roman dramas or uh, these historical reenactments of ancient Rome. Why do they always use British actors for that? Shouldn't use authentic Italians or people who are Romanesque background for those productions? So in 2015, this opera company, they announced that they would no longer use ethnic makeup in all of its productions. The broadcast of the production had not been removed from one uh, from the on-demand section of the Mets website. Productions such as Verdi's Othello, or is it Othello, have historically included performances changing their skin tone in order to play black roles. Puccini's Madame Butterfly has also had performers in yellow face portraying Asian characters, as did Arthur Sullivan, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan's Mikado, which was a huge success, a huge hit. And if you've never seen the Mikado, it's a lot of fun. It's not making fun of these people. It's a... His, it, it, a hilarious story. And the music is really, really good. In fact, you can find uh, there's this Canadian production here on YouTube that was really well done. But it's a really funny story and it's a lot of fun. And we forget that that's the reason we create great art and great music is to have fun, isn't it? Create debate. Various musicians have raised awareness of why blackface and yellowface is outdated and offensive, and some opera companies have moved to banning the practice. For some opera houses, this means casting performers from any ethnicity and roles, but without changing their skin tone. In others, this means casting ethnically appropriate singers in the roles. 
In the face of New Greco's casting and the surfacing of her photos earlier this week, many musicians shared their disappointment that the practice of blackface is still occurring in 2022. One soprano shared Nebreco's Instagram post on Twitter and said, quote, In case you thought the opera world has made any sort of tangible progress, Ari Blackface, the industry's most famous soprano, posted this nine hours ago from a recent Aida. But Aida is an Ethiopian character. If Anna Nebreco is the best person to play that role, then she deserves that role. Whether she's white, black, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So you find an Asian opera singer that's really, really good, have them play the part of Aida and be authentic about it. Another soprano also put, I've never seen an opera company obsess about ethnic and historical accuracy in any opera except Aida. Why is that? What would happen to the opera if you didn't blackface? What would happen is nothing. No impact on the production, no impact on the storytelling, none, zero. Okay, I'll give you that. But if this opera... In other words, what's happening here is this opera company is giving a big middle finger to all of the SJW types out there. And they're saying, no, we're going to stick with what was originally done at the time period. And you have to understand that that's how things were done in those in those times. That's how it was done, because that's all they had available. They didn't have the transportation that we have today. They were working on that. I mean, you have these ocean liners. But how many days did it take to cross from one continent to another? How long did it take to take? uh, How long does it take to take a train? I mean, I'm going to have to take a train down to Georgia probably pretty soon, and it takes two and a half days just to get there from where I'm at here, and I have to take a bus to get down to Omaha to do it. So there you go, folks. Twitter user added: "Just book more black singers, you dinosaurs." Hey, and we go back to this idea that if Anna Nubreco was the best soprano or or the best person for that role, and she beat out everybody, then that's who gets the role because she's the best. It doesn't matter whether she's white, Russian, Asian, German, Irish, American, Chinese, Japanese. I don't care what her skin color is. It doesn't matter. If she's the best person for the role, that's the person who should get the role in that opera in Verdi's Aida. The Arena di Verona added in the response that, quote, when we discuss modern things, we have to remember that we are using an old historical production. Next year, we will have a new production of Aida. So before I get too long in the video, go check out this article at Classic FM about this controversy over Anna Nubreco refusing to or defending herself and playing a role of Aida wearing black makeup, dark makeup or blackface. Article by Sophia Alexandra Hall. But it's really refreshing to see that you have an opera company out there that say, no, we're going to be authentic to the time period because that's the way that things were done at that particular time. If there's no racial motivation behind it, I'll say this one last time, then I don't have a problem with them setting uh, setting this in that time period and having somebody dress up in dark makeup to represent a character that is from Ethiopia, Egypt, you name it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. You can also find me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, or follow me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. This is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this great country, and I'll catch you next time.